Okay. In Erratic Song What love is native to a stone? Let me start again. I always find it hard to talk about my work and, you know, say this is what my work represents because um, when I'm working on anything, of course, you get all these ideas that are going through your head constantly. It's like, you know, this brings back these memories and it brings that memory and it brings this direction and it brings that voice from that person. So it's like a collusion of thoughts all at one time. And so when I'm asked about my work, it's really hard to <laughs> sit here and and, and explained in such a simple way that this is what my work is about because it's all about energy and, and thoughts and uh, processes and squeezing all that information like almost into a tube or something so that you just end up with this line. All this stuff and it gets pushed into this one line. And so it's like, I, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> When I first started out, Indian art was looked at as, you know, being a, a thing, or it's a certain way it was looked at, and it, it was, um, I guess it was accepted in a certain kind of way. And that really did not interest me. I just thought, you know, there's so many things that we could be doing. Uh, my dad was one of the people who thought, oh, what, how come you don't have any bears in your paintings, or how come there's no turtles in your paintings, or what's to say this is Indian art? <laughs> And it's something that really kind of confused him for a while. I think he started to understand that if you're a native person making art, then it's native art. It doesn't have to look a certain way or be marketed. That's what it was. It was marketed in a, a specific kind of way. There's um, so much more to us than just, you know, that flat line of this is what an Indian person is. It's like endless amounts of wells that we can fill and, you know, continue to fill. Oh, I love rocks. I, um, I've used rocks quite a bit in my work. I'd say about 20 years ago, maybe longer than that, I would come, come to this river and collect river rocks. I could find heart-shaped rocks which, um, in a really simplistic way, represented, you know, love and uh, love of, uh, of uh, nature. So. I've used those, I've used uh, photos of rocks, I've used fossils. If you look here in these rocks, these I don't know where they were mined from, but there's elements of fossils in these rocks, which I just find is really cool that you can be sitting on something that at one time, millions of years ago, had life. And that kind of feeds me that um, there was life here at one time, you know, that goes beyond my own life. I guess it's because it's so common and ordinary, but each rock in its own self is like an individual. They're different, they're shaped differently, they're influenced by the environment that uh, the rock is living in. But I just feel sometimes there's, uh, it's more than just an inanimate object. It's got a personality and, um, I don't know, it's been here for a long, long time. I made the, the stand and the pillow and uh, I got the rock, the heart-shaped rock, and I put my hand on, on the rock and I had, I sort of dipped it in blueberries and then put my handprint on the rock. And Daniel made this really beautiful poem. Yeah, you know, he's a poet and, he, and he's a powerful poet. It juxtaposes together with that rock so nicely. Okay. In Erratic Song, what love is native to a stone? Let me start again. What love is native to a stone? The love of falling, rolling, tumbling down, the love of gravity, not to be mistaken for either that of earth or eternity, the two whose own shared love gave stone its birth. But after the fall down mountains is done, after the stones come down to dirt, is birth tectonically 
What else might a stone by nature or dreams desire? What love is native to a dark, cold, heavy heart then? The love of water through the soil? Yes, that rainbow flow and color, oh, rivers and transparency. And the love of heat, even fire, which is also love of light and lightness, best known as levity. And the love that brought your face up for air last spring, yes, after eons underground. It appeared again in a furrow, blurred with clay, yet clear as a planet, full with all the loves above, loves native to it. Daniel David Moses.